This is going to be a really interesting tutorial because it allows us to plan our own code into a website, allowing us to control when a website is heading into and what we want to do with those existing sessions. And all you need to know is a little bit of JavaScript and you're good to go. And before we get started, kids, remember, hacking is illegal. If you get caught hacking, do not tell them you know who is Mr. Hacker Loy. <laughs> And if you want to, you can go ahead and try hacking Mr. Loy Liang Yang's website, loyliangyang.com. And yes, I promise you, I will help you find your IP address. I'll help you find your username, your passwords, your data buff, and everything about you for free. So go ahead and do that. <laughs> so this is what we call as a cross-site scripting attack. And there are two forms of it. The first type is what we call as the reflected cross-site scripting attack. And what it does here is that when you target into a website, say for example, loyliangyang.com, what you have here is you have the following path. And of course, in this case, you could enter something like JavaScript and you're able to say, capture the cookie information. You're able to redirect the website into another completely different site. And the second type of attack is what we call as a stored cross-site scripting attack. So what this does is that your JavaScript in this case is going to be stored into the computer back end, usually typically on the back end database system. And you have your code right here. So whoever loads over into the site will load the hacker JavaScript as well. So this is what we call as the stored cross-site scripting attack. And yes, you are correct. We'll be learning both of them today. So this is going to be a pretty long tutorial and I already had 50 cups of coffee in order to do this tutorial for you. So go ahead, grab yourself a cup of coffee, tea or me. <laughs> so right in front of us, we're on Kali Linux. This is going to be the ethical hacking operating system they'll be using as part of doing this tutorial. So that's really cool. So right in front of us, we have a website. All right, so this states here, new level of human resource management, HR management, and we have a login on the left side. So let's go ahead and enter, say our login name. All right, so in this case, I can enter Hackaloy, and we have the password of 1234-5678. Of course, this is the password to use, especially when you are a popular hacker, because people would think that you'll be using a very complicated password. So again, reverse psychology 101. So go ahead and click on login, and right here, we're in. All right, we're now inside the Orange Human Resource Management System. And what we're trying to do here is to uncover the entry points that will allow us to inject our own script. So right over here, we have a typical looking website. And what we are trying to do now is we're targeting the part here, which is the URL. So in this case, we would have different type of links, pages, and so on. And what we're trying to target and attack over here is to inject different type of script into this segment so that we can see whether we're able to do, say, for example, an alert followed by say X, S, S, and we have different payloads to try it out. And as we inject different type of payloads over here, and the moment we get a pop-up, say in this case for an alert, it means that we are able to prove that this segment is vulnerable, susceptible to cross-site scripting attack. And you can see over here, we are in the following directory in Kali Linux, which is USR share, Woodless, the blue fuzz injections. And once we're over here, we're able to go ahead and figure out what are the different type of payloads that we can use as part of, again, attacking different parts of the URL. So in this case, we have xxs.txt. So if I go ahead and enter, say, hit xxs.txt, we can see all these sort of different examples of JavaScript that we can inject over into the URL. We can see which one of them is going to allow us to get the pop-up that we want to validate that this segment or this section of the page is vulnerable. And as you can see over here, we have the URL. In this case, we have going into the directory of templates, recruitment, job vacancy .php. So this is the target page and with the following of recruit code equal. So they're expecting some kind of recruit code. And in this case, we're ending off a JavaScript first. So we're ending off the JavaScript and then inserting our own JavaScript into the recruit code. So in this case, this allow us to execute whatever script we want to write in here. And once you're waiting in three, two, one, hit enter on that, boom, you have this beautiful pop-up. And what does it mean? It means that this part of the page is susceptible. It is vulnerable to cross-site scripting attack. And you'll be saying, okay, so what? What can we do about it? Now, before we go into the, what we can do about it, you can also use another tool like Burp Suite to help us load all of those different malicious cross-site scripting payloads over into the target field. So in this case, let's go ahead and start Burp. And what we can do now is go over into the top right corner of the browser. All right, so go ahead and select on it. And of course, use Foxy Proxy. In this case, we're targeting over into Burp Suite. So Burp Suite will help us intercept the requests. So once you're in here, all we got to do is say, for example, I hit enter on this again. And Burp Suite under the proxy tab 
will pick this up. It will pick this request up. And all we got to do is do a right click, all right, send over into, in this case, so let's send over into Intruder. All right, so once you're in Intruder, all you got to do right now is go ahead and clear all this different payload markers. And once you're ready, you can just change the recruit code. In this case, maybe I'll put A. And what I can do now is go ahead and highlight this one at the payload marker, go over on the payloads and click on the load. So in this case, we're wordless. And of course, we can go over in the directory that we were at earlier under WFUS under injections on the XSS. So here we have all this different cross-site scripting attack payloads that we can use and start attacking, hammering away into that specific view, right? And we can see the length and see what is the potential response to it. So if you would investigate a little deeper, you can see right here, we have the following, the function go back, right? So in this case, you can see that the payload has been supplied over here and you can see the function has the curly braces, all right, as well as another curly braces over here. So if we can escape away from this following, it means that this will allow us to run our own JavaScript onto the site. So this is genius. So extracting that piece of code over here, you can see the following. If we could terminate from this end with a double code and then followed by say a curly braces to end it all off. And then from there on, we're then able to say, close off possibly the script and then inject our own script into it, which is why the initial payload you saw earlier was working. So what we're going to do now is we don't know the username or the password, but what we could possibly do is sort of hijack their session. So what I can do now is go ahead and use Python 3-m HTTP.server and we're starting up our server. So anytime we can redirect all those session information from the user to the hacker. So in this case, what I can do now is go ahead and craft out a more specific payload that allow us to do just that. So you can see over here, we have the document.location and we're forwarding this over into the hacker's IP address. All right, so in this case, let me just go ahead and double check on this. This is on port 8000. All right, so let's go ahead and fix this up a little bit. So let's go ahead and enter port 8000 for this. And once we're ready, in three, two, one, hit enter on that, go back over into terminal and see what we get. All right, nothing for now. Let's go ahead and try out the IP ADDR. Okay, we have the IP address 192.168.0.117. Let's go ahead and start it up again. Head back over into the payload. All right, so in this case, we have document.location. We have the following of document.location 192.168.0.117, part 8000 slash cookie equal. Okay, let's go ahead and troubleshoot this one. Okay, I've added a question mark over here. So let's go ahead and hit enter on that. And let's see what we get this time around. Mm -hmm. All right, still nothing, but no worries. Let's go ahead and try something else. Now, what I've done here is I've changed this up to location.href. So let's go ahead and hit enter on that. Go back over terminal. Let's see what we get. Uh -huh. So you know what's the problem. The problem is because there's numerous special characters in here. And what we need to do then is to encode it. So we can go back over into Burp Suite, go to the decoder tab, copy and paste the payload over here and go to the right side and select as encode as URL. So once we have this, we can copy, go over into the browser and replace this payload with the URL encoded payload. And once you're ready in three, two, one, hit enter. Now go back over terminal and see what we get. Boom. You're in. It's game over. So here's the thing. We may not have the username or the password, but it doesn't matter. What we have here now is a session cookie. And all we need to do is to copy and paste those information over into our browser. And that's it. We would gain access to the user's existing session. Now here I am in a completely different browser. I go to the top right corner and I select under more tools and I select under developer tools. So once I'm in here, all right, what I can do now is go ahead and enter those different name as well as the value that's been assigned for this particular site. All right. So now we've got all the values, all the cookies right here. This is the hacked values. And you can see over here, we have not yet went over into one part of the site, which is the index.php. So once we're ready, all we can do now is go over into URL and enter the following of index.php. And once you're ready, go ahead and hit enter on that. Boom. <laughs> we are in. You can see right here. Welcome, hacker. So now we have gained access to the user's session. The other payload that we have here is to redirect the user into loyliangyang.com. So this is super neat. So if I go over into the encoded payload, I go back over into the browser and I replace this payload over here with the encoded payload. I hit enter on that. Watch this carefully. Hit enter on that. Boom. We are now brought over into Mr. Hackle Lloyd's website.
Now moving forward, we're going over the, the other type of cross-site scripting attack. So in this case, it's a stored cross-site scripting attack. What it does is that our code, our script will now be stored into a part of the site, possibly persisting on the backend database. So whoever loads into this site will now load the code that we want to enter over into the site. Super cool. So here we have a super interesting piece of code. What it does here for us is to allow us to interact in live with the user. So whoever loads into this page, we can send a script directly over into their browser session. So what I can do now is go ahead and click over into the following, all right, here, you have the IP address, all right? So this is the attackers IP address of 192.168.0.117 for the port of 1234. All right, so once we're ready, click Submit. Now it's persisting over here under the entry. Now moving over to Terminal, what this does for us is it gives us persistent interactive session with the user. So if we go ahead and hit enter on that, and what we can do now, so say for example, alert, you have been hacked by Mr. Hacker Loy, all right? So with that, I can go ahead and hit enter on this, all right, I go back over to browser, you see over here, you have been hacked by Mr. Hacker Law. So we are interacting live with the user and I can even redirect them that we saw earlier to Mr. Hacker Law's website. So what I can do now is go ahead and enter the following, right, which is window.location.href, right, in this case, equal, right, HTTPS, loyliangyang.com, all right, you hit enter on this, you go back over to browser, you see here, there's a redirection. We've been redirected to Mr. Hackalog's website. And remember kids, with great power comes great responsibility.